All right, so you guys are seeing my, I'm looking at the computer too, and it looks like you've been able to see my, my uh, work table. Can everybody hear me still? Give me a thumbs up. All right, super. Okay, so I'm going to start really at the, at the very beginning because some of you folks may not have had the opportunity uh, to load and shoot a cap and ball revolver. So it's not going to make much sense to you if you haven't had this chance to, uh, to do this because you're probably thinking, why in the world would you make a paper cartridge because they're so flimsy uh, that it just doesn't make any sense unless you know how to load a cap and ball ro revolver. So I'm going to go with the 1851 Navy. And I'm going to look at the screen and make sure I can keep this in the camera. So we've got uh, a revolver before metallic cartridges came out. And so uh, just like a cap and ball single shot, this would be a six shooter cap and ball, same, same principle, but so there's no cartridge to it. What you would do is you take your powder measure and take a particular measure of powder. I'm just faking it now. And when you got in this gun, about 20 to 22 grains, you'd pour that in. Then you would pour your powder down inside one of the chambers. And then you'd take, let me find my round, round ball. Then you take a ball and hopefully you can see that and work that ball with powder under it. I don't have any powder under it, but if I did, I would then take my ramrod, it's called the rammer or ramming lever, and push that down on top of that uh, powder charge. And I didn't do it because I didn't want to have to figure out how to get that ball out of there without any powder underneath it. There, I got it out. And then I would take a percussion cap, which looks a lot like those red uh, cap gun caps, but it's copper. And I would put a percussion cap and I'd push that down on the nipple on the top, and then I'd have a loaded chamber. And I could do that six times, put the powder in it, put it back on half cock, put the powder in it, put a ball on, use my loading lever to ram that, that down. Let me see if I can get that where you can see it. So I'd take my loading lever, push that ball down on top of that powder charge, and then I'd put a percussion cap on top of it. That would give me a loaded cap and ball revolver with loose powder and shot. And uh, I'd have to do that every single time. So I'd have to load up my powder measure, dump it in, put the ball on top, ram it down, load up my powder measure, put the ball on top, ram it down six times until the thing was full. And now you guys that have shot Western Heritage know we usually load five because the firing pin is on the hammer on a single action army revolver. And actually in the, with the cap and ball revolvers, the way Sam Colt invented these things, there is a, I'm gonna try not to point this right at you, but there is a notch, a slot in the hammer, a groove right down the, down the middle of the hammer and there is a pin between each of these chambers. And if I lay it low, the layer, lower this hammer down uh, on top of that pin, then it's locked and I could actually safely carry six rounds in a cap and ball revolver. And uh, you're not having it on half cock. You're not having it where you could bump it and have it go off. The firing pin is not over a, a loaded round. It, it can be perfectly safe and have six rounds uh, loaded that way. When they went to the guns that loaded from the rear, there's no way to do that. So you just left one empty and put the hammer right down on the empty. So that's the way you would load a, a cap and ball revolver if you had lo loose powder and shot. If you are loading paper cartridge, you'd have them all ready to go. They're already preloaded. And there's an example of one right there. And you just drop it down inside your chamber, you swing it over, you put your loading lever down and you're done. So there's not a whole lot of extra measuring. You don't have to do uh, measure it six different times, all of that. And it's much, much quicker uh, to be able to, to reload. Uh, once you've shot six rounds, you can reload five or six paper cartridges very, very quickly compared to loose powder and shot. Uh, the other thing I just wanted to point out, if you ever get a chance to get out to the range and, and shoot any of these, uh, go with somebody that has done it before so they, or that they can uh, help you through the process. But one thing that uh, some people will skip, I've got a powder measure that has a nozzle on top of it. And I could have a 20 grain nozzle. I could just fill the nozzle and then I could pour it right down inside and skip the step 
of using the powder measure. I wouldn't have to use a powder measure at all. That works great the first time you've loaded this gun. Uh, if you fired it six times and decide to go straight from the flask and there's a little bit of a spark down inside there still, there's a little smoldering ember and you go right from your flask down into your chamber and that baby goes off, you just probably, you lost your hand, you probably lost everything. So that's why I always go from the flask to the powder measure. If I've got a burning ember down inside there and I'm dumping this in there, I'm going to have 20 grains go off not a half a pound uh, and making this thing into a hand grenade. So don't skip that step of using the powder measure. It takes a little bit longer, uh, but it'll save your life. It'll for sure, save your fingers, if nothing else. So don't ever skip that step. So then we've got our, our paper cartridges. And again, very flimsy. This one's got the 22 grains in it. The second reason for uh, having a paper cartridge instead of loading with loose powder and shot. If you've ever loaded black powder in the wind, you'll notice how much gets away from you. Uh, if you if you press your finger too hard down on top of a, a nozzle, you get a you get a different powder charge. It's uh, difficult to be perfectly consistent, particularly when these cartridges uh, were being used. And a lot of times that was in wartime. And so uh, in wartime, you're spilling powder all over the place. You got cannons going off. You don't know what's going on. If you have the time to re reload your revolver, you couldn't be consistent. This gives you a consistent load because it's all measured out uh, already for you and ready to go. It's already lubri lubricated and, and ready to fire. Very flimsy. So there's a couple of ways to, uh, to store these. And both of the ones I've got here that I'll show you are historically correct. So you've got a, a 3 8 inch, what I use is a Forstner bit, uh, and built a little box. And so your cartridge would go down inside the six of them, can go down inside your box. I've got a lid, and the hinge right here is just a piece of cotton that's glued on the back. So you have a box of six, six rounds, fill your whole cylinder full. And a lot of times these boxes would come with six percussion caps, sometimes seven in case you drop one. Uh, as well. So you'd have six rounds, you'd have your percussion caps, you'd be ready to go. They'd be protected in a wooden box. And then that wooden box can be uh, wrapped in a, in a wrapping. So you'd have paper around it to hold it all together. This one's for 44 uh, caliber 1860 Army. You'd have a uh, pull string that's part of that. And so you just rip that thing open. You've got six rounds and you're ready to load. So that's one, that's one method is the one with the with the top. Another method that's perfectly historically correct as well, and these are done by uh, Will Abbott out of Missoula, one of our other instructors, but he's got uh, his wrapped, it's a wooden block, but it's just the paper that holds the cartridges in. So you just put your cartridges down in there, cover it up with, with paper, and you'd have a, a rip tab as well. So there's two different ways of doing this. It's either just allowing the cartridges to be held in by the paper or allowing the cartridges to be held in with your wooden top. So uh, not a lot of not a lot of energy and, and expense went to these boxes because what was for sale was the was the cartridges inside. And so this is usually a poplar or some cheap wood and they weren't made super great. They're just made to hold it until you ripped it open and and fired your loaded your six rounds to fire. So people ask, you know, why, why would you have paper cartridges around in the first place? And it's much like, um, you know, today you can reload your own ammunition. Most shooters don't reload. I know most of us reload when we can't understand why people don't reload, but a lot of shooters don't reload. So they carry it, they get a box of shells uh, and it may at the hardware store or wherever they would get them before all the gun stores were available. And sits in the shelf and or in the in the cupboard or whatever you shoot a few every now and then and and that's the same way that people would during the cap and ball era they go to the hardware store they pick up a six rounds maybe pick up a couple boxes have them at home uh, they didn't shoot all that often necessarily and they didn't want to have all the powder and shot it just so much easier so these have been around for uh, a long long time uh, well before the civil war of course they got really popular during the civil war started really in the Mexican War when folks were having a hard time with consistent uh, charges 
and getting them loaded on uh, just before going into the battlefield. And so um, actually started in the late 1840s, starting paper cartridges. So that's, uh, that's really what it's all about. And uh, for you, those of you wondering, well, you push that ball down in there, why doesn't it just fall out? Well, the ball is much bigger, uh, much bigger than the chamber. And so you actually put a ring of lead around when you shove this thing down in there is a ring of lead that's on the top because that ball is fitting so tightly it shaves that ring off. And so that ball has got to sit in there tight enough to uh, keep the thing in place for six shots. Because as I shoot in the recoil, you don't want your other ones coming loose. So it's going to be a very, very tight fit. Uh, Conical bullets were available almost at the same time that Colt invented the, the revolver, a practical revolver. And so they just fit right on top, just like the ball does. And you can slide that underneath and ram a, ram a conical bullet down as well. So you don't have to have a paper cartridge to shoot a conical bullet. Just pour your powder in, put the bullet on top, and, and it's the same process. Cartridges just make it easier. So not a difficult thing, really not a difficult thing uh, to make whatsoever. So we're going to make a few of these. And I'm hoping you guys have some supplies. If you read the, uh, read the supply list that I put on the website, you, you, you could very well have that all ready to go. If you're in the Gallatin County Club, you're totally spoiled because I mailed you everything. So you got no excuse. So if, you're, if you were in the Gallatin County Club, you should have got a dowel and you should have got sandpaper and hopefully uh, you have tapered this dowel from about one inch down to the bottom uh, so about one inch of it you've tapered with a piece of sandpaper and so i gave you a 3 8 dowel which is 0.375 and uh, that's the same size as the as the cartridge or as the bullet so you're going to Kind of make this a little bit of a funnel shape. Doesn't have to be a huge funnel shape, but just taper it down probably about an eighth of an inch from the top to the bottom. And so you've got a funnel with a flat bottom on it. Then I sent you a piece of wax. And the only reason you got the piece of wax is so that you could take your, your mandrel, your cartridge former, and rub that wax on that tapered end. I want you to do that so that your, your paper filter doesn't get glued to your stick. And uh, I've got a cartridge former. Uh, that's what I'll be working with. Uh, but you can do this with this dowel. And so you just rub that wax on there. And that way, when we glue our paper cartridge together and a little bit of glue gets on the wood, we're not gluing our paper cartridge to the, to the former. This one is made out of aluminum. And it is from Mesa, Mesa Winds Cartridge Formers. And uh, this is a really, if you're going to do a lot of this, this is worth, worth getting. These are about 35 bucks, I think. Uh, and this is a 36 caliber one. Uh, it's from a guy by the name of Tim Schrainer out of uh, Kansas makes these. And they're really handy because they're, they're milled aluminum, uh, really, really good uh, heavy duty things. They, of course, they're not going to wear like a piece of wood uh, will wear. But I might just go ahead and wax this aluminum one a little bit too, because you can still get you can still get some glue residue on the on the aluminum it doesn't stick as easy as it does the wood but it can happen and i also spoiled the gallatin county montana kids because i gave you the template on paper so if you cut that out and then you put it on a piece of cardstock then you'd end up with a stiff template like this one uh, that's going to make the the, the uh, tube, what we'll call it, the cartridge part, the part of the, of the filter paper that, that holds, the, holds the black powder. Uh, and again, I sent you the filter paper as well. So this is just regular coffee filter, the old fashioned coffee filter, which was the newfangled coffee filter not very long ago, back when we all just had uh, percolator pots. This one uh, is a drip coffee maker filter paper. And so you go buy a little package of these for $1.99, you will end up having uh, enough paper to make cartridges the rest of your life. So you should have got that. You've got your template. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I've got some paper I've already, filter paper I've already worked with. And if you've got your template already 
cut out and ready to go. Uh, we're just going to draw. And I got this uh, three of them thick. And so we're just going to draw around our template. And do that twice. I've already done one, so I'll give you a chance to draw around your template. And if you if you have your paper, filter paper folded, you're going to be able to get as many of these things as you've got as you got folds. And so you fold it in quarters, you're going to get four of these at a time. I've got three of them stacked on top of each other. And I've nitrated this paper uh, because these are the ones I'm making. We're actually going to shoot this spring and and nitrated paper will uh, disappear within the chamber a little easier than unnitrated paper. So I just put it in a nitrate solution, let it dry. And so this should hopefully when these things go off this spring and when we're out doing one of our field days, they will not leave any residue behind inside the chamber. So there won't be anything in there, but burnt powder and a little bit of soot. So if you guys got your scissors, go ahead and cut out your cut out your paper. This would be the funnel part of it. And I'm going to do the other one as well. I got them stacked up three deep so I can get six out of here. Make one cylinder full. You guys got any questions, go ahead and unmute yourself and, and ask. I can't really read the chat box. I'm a little ways away from my computer. So if I'm going too fast or you I've said something that confused you, just let me know. All right, we got Robert from Nebraska. I just saw that. I can, can read the chat from here, uh, barely. So welcome, Robert. All right, so that makes the part of the paper cartridge, uh, the, the tube that's going to end up holding our powder. The other part is the bottom of it. So it's got these things got a flat bottom on them to hold as much powder as possible. So I've got another template. It's cost 10 cents. And it's uh, just a simple dime. And we're going to we are going to you could use a penny if you had to it gets a little big but we're going to make a couple of circle patterns here with our dime so we've got six bottoms as well as the funnels cut out these circles And, oh, Millie, did you happen to start the, the taping on this? I never remember to turn on the camera. Well, if we, if we missed it, I've got a uh, YouTube video coming out that's going to cover this as well. So it's going to be just like this, only without an audience. It'll just be me and a camera. All right, so there's some of those bottom. Cut out the other ones. Okay, move my filter paper out of the way, the scraps. Okay, I'm going to cut one more. I ended up having one of my bottom sheets not completely in the right place. And so I got five and a half instead of six circles. Let me cut one more out of here. Did you work on that, Todd? There was a question if your YouTube will show how to nitrate the filter paper. Uh, I, I, um, it got to be kind of long, and so I didn't do the paper nitration on that video. I'll do a separate one on paper nitration. 
it's uh, I, I kind of hesitated if I wanted. I mean, all of this stuff ought to be done with a with the leader present. That's why we're using coffee tonight with with everybody out there instead of black powder. Uh, the same kind of thing with with nitrating paper. I'm afraid to have kids go do it by themselves. Uh, the stuff gets a little caustic. You're gonna want rubber gloves, and uh, it's not a difficult process at all. It's a simple process, uh, but uh, messing around with potassium nitrate and and uh, getting it on your hands and in your mouth, we're gonna want to have that relatively controlled. And so, uh, trying to figure out how to do that without putting anybody at risk, because you know, if you show somebody something, they're gonna go try it. And uh, and it's certainly not a big risky thing. It's just I would like to have the kids do it with leaders. And so maybe I'll put one out there and somehow figure out a way to get it to you guys as as leaders. And then you could do it uh, at your uh, at your club meetings. And it wouldn't be encouraging the kid to try this by themselves. Uh, just kind of caustic stuff. You don't want to spill it on yourself either. Because if you take a potassium nitrate, get it all mixed up in in water, and then saturate your coffee filter, and then basically hang it on a uh, hang on a clothesline and when it's dry it's nitrated ready to go you can shoot these things without nitrating the paper it's not the end of the world you might just have to take a paper clip and open it up and dig around in there a little bit and, and pull the little the, the bottom out of it just in case it leaves a ring of, of paper stuck to the bottom so it's not uh, absolutely necessary to nitrate it but it does help with uh, trying to leave as little residue as as possible so now we're going to go back to our the uh, tube part that we've made, kind of our cone-shaped piece. And there's an edge on that, if you follow the template correctly, that it's kind of a little tab. It kind of, it kind of dipped in right on the very end. So that's where we're going to put our glue. And then we're going to put it on our cartridge former and roll it right around the cartridge former overlaps just a little bit and push it down and all this is i even spoiled you gallatin county kids and sent you the the craft glue the whole nine yards so you got everything this is nothing but elmer's uh this one's a permanent glue stick works as good as anything so what that now has given me is my basically kind of looks like a cocoon out of my filter paper so what i'm going to do next since i've already got it on the cartridge former i'm going to take one of my bottoms and i'm going to put this around just the outside edge you don't want to get a lot of glue in the middle of this thing because that's where your powder is going to sit so just the outside edge because it's going to go up around the bottom of your bottom of your uh, cone shaped part of the cartridge this is where a cartridge former is handy. So I can shove it right in there, give it some pressure until it's pretty flush on the bottom. And then I can back it out. And what it's done is it's tightened that, uh, that bottom piece that's made out of a dime right around the bottom and glued it right to the bottom of the cartridge. So now I've got kind of a cocoon with one end closed up. So you guys that are using the you're using this as your as your cartridge shaper as your mandrel uh, you can do the same kind of thing you just keep your keep your uh, cartridge your tube your funnel shaped piece on here and then put this on on there and go ahead and glue it around the edge and you can just form that right around the right around that cartridge so if you don't if you don't have the cartridge former but you got the dowel you, you can do that too and it works it works just fine just keep working it around and if it pops up in a place, you might need to put a little more glue and then keep working it around one more time. See if you can't get that to hold. So I'm going to do another one. And we'll just wrap it around. It goes pretty quick. I mean, when you, it's kind of a tedious thing, but once you kind of get on a roll, they go they go pretty quick, and you can you can get a bunch of them done. And honestly, you don't you don't shoot these things so fast that uh, you go through gobs of paper cartridges either. It's not like a semi-auto or something. 
one nice thing about a cap and ball revolver, you can go a long ways in a few bucks. And I have noticed uh, just recently, or actually the last several months, you can't even buy a cap and ball revolver. I mean, they're out of stock for crying out loud. I mean, there's there's hardly anything in stock. You still get uh, powder and shot and all of that, but you're having, you're having a heck of a time even finding a cap and ball revolver that's that's uh, available for sale. So it looks like if you go to Dixie Gunworks that they have theirs, and uh, but then you press on, put it in the cart and go look at the cart and they say out of stock. I called uh, Valerie, we always get our stuff from Cimarron. I called Valerie at Cimarron and Cimarron doesn't have cat and ball revolvers. So I guess we're in a, a buy off period and people have bought even all the way to cap and ball. So I'll just do one more. Hopefully you guys have a couple of these done if you're following along at home with your double. One of the reasons I chose to do this with 36 instead of 44 because it makes it real easy with the double because uh, our double is 3 8 so it's just 3 7 5 and our bullets are 3 7 5. Okay well, that'll give me three of these things. So uh, you should have a mark on one inch from the bottom of your dowel. You should have a mark one inch up where the top of your cartridge should be. And I would guess, unless you're way better at this than I am, you're going to end up having wrapped it pretty close to that line, but not quite. And so one nice thing about this cartridge former is I've got a couple of uh, grooves in here. It tells me how, how deep that this thing is or how tall this thing is supposed to be. And I can put a pencil lead right into that groove. And so if I wrapped it a little high, I can take my scissors and I can cut this back to the proper height. And I'll do that to all of these because it seems like I, as hard as I try to wrap them exactly the right height, they always end up going a little over, which is better than a little under. So I put my pencil lead down into that groove and just cut the, the top off. You kind of eyeball it if you're looking at a dowel, just you don't want it to go higher than the one inch mark on your dowel. It's actually 0.96, but I wasn't going to get that finicky with you on your dowel. One inch is good enough. Okay. So now I got on the right height. Another place where these formers come in handy is now I got a place to hold that cocoon. Now that I'm ready, I'm going to put my top of my glue so it doesn't dry out. So now we're ready to add the powder. So if you guys have got your ground uh, coffee, then you're going to want to uh, fill this up to about just about a not even quite an eighth of an inch uh, from the top. So it's better to be a little low than a little high. I'm going to do this with, with black powder. This is 3F uh, Old Einsford. I'm going to fill my nozzle and I'm going to use the powder measurer. And get my, this is about 20 grains, a little heavy. Shoots well with about 22 grains. So it's a little bit heavy. So I'm going to fill up this powder measure. Shake that back down. So now I got my 20 grains and I'm going to uh, pick up my little cocoon shaped thing and try to get this powder down inside there. And then if I tap it just a little bit, it ends up settling. You can kind of almost compress the powder without compressing it. It doesn't really compress it, but it's You'd be surprised how much it'll settle. Make sure that I'm open all the way around. Now, there's a, a company called Ear is Gone Bullet Molds. And Ear is Gone will take, have taken, historically correct 
uh, bullets. Actually, they're real bullets. They're historically correct because they found them on a battlefield, Civil War battlefield. Uh, and they've taken those and they've copied them uh, in, a, in a Lee mold. And so if any of you guys do your own casting, you can uh, use pure lead. You want them pretty soft and, uh, and cast them into an ear is gone bullet mold, uh, 36 or 44 caliber. They've got them uh, and they've got them for dragoons. If you're shooting the walker and the, and the dragoons, they've got them for 44s for the 1860 army. This one, this is 36. This will go in the 51 Navy, like I've got here on the table. It'll go in the uh, in a 36 caliber Remington. And the nice thing about them, this was actually the Colt Cartridge Works bullet, and it's got a I'm gonna get my hand now, and it's got a uh, heel around the bottom. And so if if you've ever taken a look at a 22 shell, you'll see that the the bullet is the same size as the case. And so there, there's a little tapered thing at the bottom where the, uh, where the bullet has got a heel on it and fits down inside the case. And so it's a little bit narrower at the bottom of the bullet. There's another Lee mold that shoots a, uh, another 36 caliber bullet, but it doesn't have a heel on it. And I've loaded these in paper cartridge. It's hard, but you can do it. Uh, and this got a few more grains of a, of a bullet to it. And if you can load it loose powder and shot easier than you can load it in paper cartridge. So the heel is really handy. And uh, so you guys in, uh, that I sent these two in the mail in our cl local club here, you'll see the, the little heel around the bottom and that's where the glue is gonna go. Any of you guys at home that are doing it with round ball, they didn't historically load round ball paper cartridges, but we can, and they actually they are made and sold now. So you can buy round ball paper cartridges from Buffalo Arms and places like that. Uh, you can do that or if you guys didn't have any access to 36 caliber balls or anything like that then you could just made it out of play-doh and and uh, just for the demonstration purposes so hopefully you guys have got a you've got one at least one of these things done on your on your cartridge former your wooden cartridge former you've got coffee grounds in there and we're ready to glue the bullet in so let's try that next and get my glue going again Try not to get a lot of glue on the bottom of the bullet because that's the part that's gonna be sitting on the powder and you'll just glue some powder to the bullet and you'd rather have all that powder off for propulsion and not just be glued to the bottom of your bullet. So I'm just gonna go around the edge of that heel. And you guys that I sent the bullets to, if you're looking at those bullets and you're going, geez, he can't cast bullets very well. And you're right. <laughs> some of those were some of those were not the best bullets I've ever cast, but that's why I sent them out to you in the mail, and I kept the good ones for for making the real deal that we get to shoot this spring. So uh, I didn't I didn't send you my best work. If you were in my club and got these in the mail, and you just fit that right down, right down inside of that cartridge, and I'm actually gonna take my thumbnail and see if I can tug that right to the top of that heel right up against where it gets wider on that bullet and now we've got a ready to go in the box 36 caliber bullet with 20 about 22 grains in this one uh, triple F old lines for black powder. So that's ready to go, except we don't have it lubricated. We'll do that on a, talk about lubrication on a different date. We'll put, it's got a grease groove in it. If you can see that groove above the paper now, it's got a grease groove in it. And that would, we dip this in some lubrication that keeps um, your powder soft shot after shot. So uh, when you fire one of these things with, uh, with the lubrication with the bullet lube on it, uh, it'll lay down uh, a nice coating of grease and then the black powder falling goes on top of the grease and that keeps that black powder falling almost like a toothpaste type consistency if i just shot lead and black powder it'd only take me maybe a cylinder or two and i'd have the gun pretty well jammed up because that stuff gets so hard and chalky you can hardly turn the cylinder anymore and you lose all your all of your accuracy as well so you could shoot a long, long time in a well-lubricated bullet as long as the lube is making it from one end of the barrel to the other. 
So we would lubricate these and then we drop them down in one of our uh, wooden boxes. And then you could do all kinds of fun stuff. Uh, I've just kind of made up my own label, put it through the printer. It's called masking paper. You get that from Home Depot or I don't know where else, but uh, it comes in a roll and you can wrap it all up and have them ready to go. And I don't care if people rip them open because I can just print more. And uh, the, so we'll do the whole we'll do the whole deal when we get out to the range a little bit later this spring. So I'm going to do one more of these things. Anybody have any questions or any any issues? Anybody got one done? Jacob, you got one done? You got no excuse. I sent you everything, Jaden. I bet you didn't uh, you didn't bother to whittle down your dowel over Christmas, did you? Or whenever I sent it. Todd. Yeah. Dad, I got one done. All right. Who did? Uh, farce. All right. Good. Good. Uh, yeah, I can only see a few people. I was gonna have you hold it up to the screen, but. I'm not going to be able to find that. Okay, so I just filled another one. Make sure that I have the paper turning out. Because if it turns in, I'll just catch that lip with the bullet and shove it down in there and we'll get a good seal. So you guys that have shot these before, you'll realize how much when you get out to the range and start loading paper cartridge, you load, you'll realize how fast these things load compared to having to measure out everything out on the range. There we go, put that one down in there. Yeah, that one's even better than the first one. So I got that all, all ready to go. Another uh, advantage of the nitrated paper is on the bottom here, we've got we've got two two layers thick of, of the filter paper, and so we've got that plus we got glue, and so a lot of times when you nitrate the paper, like you guys are asking about earlier, it basically makes the paper more flammable, and so when you've got that that ring of glue plus two layers of of paper um, when it's nitrated, you have a better chance of having that all completely burn up. Uh, because of those two layers right there. So it is helpful to have it, but it's it's not absolutely necessary. Like I said, you can take a paper clip and roll it around the inside, slide around the inside and pull out any any residue you may have. And sometimes you won't have any, even with a unnitrated paper, you won't have any. So that's the that's the, how the how paper cartridges were made, stored, packaged, and uh, and sold in the neighborhood hardware store, you put a few of these in your saddle bags and you were ready to go. You didn't have to have the loose powder and shot. You didn't have to try to, in the wind and the rain and the whatever conditions you're in, didn't have to try to reload with loose powder and shot. And uh, Sam Colt had started out with uh, a whole crew of, of men rolling cartridges. And so he had one of the, they always give Henry Ford the credit for assembly line, Sam Cole actually uh, used assembly line techniques and making paper cartridges and other things as well. And so he had a whole bunch of a bunch of men rolling these things until they got careless and had an accident when you're working with black powder, a spark. Uh, of course, they didn't have electric lights. And so they had uh, fireplaces going in the winter too to keep it warm. And they had uh, lanterns and anybody got careless, things could explode and, and they did. And so then he went to a whole crew of women and uh, there's a couple hundred women rolling cartridges throughout the Civil War. And they fired millions upon millions of these things during the Civil War. And then unfortunately, they had a had an accident with the women too. And I think 20, 25 or 27 of them, of those ladies that were putting cartridges together at the Colt uh, Cartridge Works uh, died in that accident. And so it uh, didn't do Sam Colt a whole lot of good for his public image and shouldn't have. Um, it's, it was quite a tragedy in a in a town in the 1860s to have 
27 women killed in a factory accident, but uh, the war was going and they kept going and, and continued to make paper cartridges until metallic cartridges started taking over. And a lot of these cap and ball revolvers stayed as cap and ball revolvers, you know, well into the cartridge era because they worked really, really well. And they were built, I've talked to people that have original Colts and they said the machine, machining on those guns, thinking it was done by steam engine power or a paddle wheel and a crick. And um, they had precision equipment. And they said that those old guns are made just unbelievable how well they're made, uh, the craftsmanship in them. And they're pretty powerful. And so other than the loading, um, you got six shots out of your cap and ball revolver safely. You got five shots out of your six gun. Uh, if you had a cartridge gun and had the hammer down on an empty, it gave you that extra round. People hung on to these things. Uh, if you did it right, you had the right caps. You didn't have misfires. Um, no sense in, in changing it out unless you did a lot of shooting. So they're around for a long time. Paper cartridges around for a long time, a cheap way to go. And, uh, and now they're they're making them again for sale, like I said, but with round ball and not so much with, with conical bullets. So was it was it Bars? Is that who you guys said you that had the paper cartridge done? Tim, was that you guys? Yep, that was us. Oh, all right, all right. Well, good, good. What did you use for your bullet? Um, we got uh, bullets from a friend that that reloads oh okay so lead, you got like a lead cylinder bullet okay good good so you got a chance to see how these things how they really look yeah they're top heavy <laughs> <laughs> yeah they are yeah they are they're definitely not something you just drop in your pocket uh right. they would and that's... Be, yeah they would be gone by the time you needed them you'd have a bullet with a little bit of paper glued to it and that's all you'd have left Right. Yeah. That's what I was going to say is that's why that, that box is so important to store them in. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I have seen folks, uh, particularly on YouTube and stuff, they go to the range and they've got, uh, they've got just the, the plastic cartridge boxes that you use for everything else. And they just drop paper cartridges into them. And, and that works too, if you don't want to make a historically correct one, there's a little bit of labor to that. Uh, but, uh, uh, I think it's kind of fun to have the stuff looking like you would have bought it in the old West period, in the Civil War period. All right, any other questions? Anybody got anything you want to put in the chat box? Sam Veltkamp, you got a bullet made? I already made some. You already made some? Yeah. Sort of. <laughs> yeah. Are uh, are they made out of coffee so that when we when we shoot them this spring they just smell like uh, uh, Starbucks? Made a few that look terrible. <laughs> there's, yeah, there's a little bit of there's a little bit to it. So yeah, how about Jaden? How'd you guys do? Come up with anything, Joel? I bet Josiah's got them all done. Yeah, we got a few of them made. Excellent. Good deal. Good deal. And Jacob, I know you're on as well. So appreciate you guys joining us. And uh, it's kind of fun when I get to, you know, I was going to do this for the club. It's, it's really fun to be able to do it for the whole country. I saw we've got some folks on from uh, Nebraska and Texas A&M. Uh, where else? Idaho, Jim's on. So good to see you guys. And uh, next month, we're going to go to food. Oh. Sam wants me to show my face. I got my cameraman here doing this. Okay. So next month we're going to uh, go to food, do the, do the pemmican. And so that's a native American jerky like stuff that would have had uh, nuts and berries and all kinds of stuff mixed in with the meat. And we're not going to use uh, chewed Buffalo meat because that would be something that your mother would do if you were in one of the tribes that had pemmican. Your mother would, would tenderize it by chewing it and then would spit it out and then would mix all the berries and nuts together and into the meat and then would spread that out and then they dry it. And so uh, uh, I'm not really into eating other people's chewed meat. So we're going to use 
uh, peanut butter and some other things and I will get a uh, I will get a, a recipe list up on the website uh, here real quick so that we can do the same kind of demonstration this time it'll be in the kitchen and we'll make basically protein protein snacks with some fruit and some nuts and whatever else I can think of put in there to kind of firm it up uh, they won't be like jerky it'll be a little stickier than jerky because we'll use peanut butter as a major protein source instead of uh, bison and uh, we'll have to probably roll them in wax paper so you can have them as individual snacks or something but you can actually actually use those so we'll do that next month and then we're going to do bullet lube uh in march and i don't know i haven't quite figured out what to do in april yet maybe we'll lube bullets in april so we'll use the bullet lube and actually lube the bullets from there so uh, with that we will see you guys in a month Trying to remember what the date is. I didn't look on the website. It's the uh, about the same date uh, in February. What is it, 21st or something in February? Anyway, we'll be back on a Monday night. Check the website for instructions. And we will see you guys then. You guys in Gallatin County, I'm looking forward to being able to mask up and get together, hopefully in April. If not, we'll do it in May and get back out to the range and get some shooting done. And we'll shoot up some of these things that I created this evening. So. See y'all guys all in uh, in February. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Todd. You Thank bet. you. Sure. Great job, Todd. Thanks. You bet. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, he's outside.